Here in this video, we're going to talk about what a limit is and some of the basic properties and rules. Here you can see I've drawn a picture of a function. And the notation that you're going to see common is written up at the top of the screen. The limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. And I wrote it in words so that you can see it there as well. And the idea is that as you approach a on the function, we want to know what we're getting close to. And you notice that the, the definition says approaches. We want to know what it's getting close to, not exactly what it is. So don't get it confused with the function value at point A. We're looking at what it's approaching. So here, if you can see my green mark, as I'm running up towards A on this function, I'm getting close to L. And as I get infinitely close to A, I'm going to get really close to L from both sides in this case. So it's important to remember that the function value is different than the limit. And also on the bottom here I've written some notation that in order for a two-sided limit to exist we must have the limit from the right and the limit from the left equal each other. And this is going to be a topic for a future video so I'm not going to get too far into it. It's Some of the basics here are if you look there's a superscript so the the limit as x approaches a from the plus is from the right and that would be from here down towards a in this case and then on here I have the limit as x approaches a from the left and that would be this side of the function so both of those need to equal each other to have a two-sided limit and in this case they do so let's start looking at some of the properties and rules and we'll do an example of each so in this first part we have direct substitution and direct substitution is the the most basic form of taking a limit it means that you plug in your a value into the function and it outputs our limit now you just have to be careful that your denominator is not zero or something that would make it to where we can't use direct substitution and again we'll cover some of the more complicated limits in future videos so here for direct substitution what we're going to do I have an example problem set up and it's the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed which is going to be equal to 1 cubed so we're going to have 1 cubed so this would be our direct substitution method and 1 cubed is equal to 1 for the next set of properties we have properties and we have the limit as x approaches a of c and in this case c is a constant so basically when you take the limit as x approaches any number of a constant it outputs the constant so here i have a limit as x approaches three of the function five so we're going to have the limit be five and if we look at it graphically it makes sense because we have the function f is equal to f of x is equal to 5 so y is equal to 5 it doesn't matter what a value as we go across we look at the value of the function is still going to be 5 for this next property we have the limit as x approaches a of the function raised to the r and we can rewrite that and move the limit inside and say the limit as x approaches a of the function all raised to the r. So here I have the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1 to the third and I'm going to rewrite that using this property as the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1 all raised to the third. Now if we use our direct substitution we know that the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1 is 1 plus 1 so what we end up with is 1 plus 1 cubed or 2 cubed which is equal to 8. Alright the next limit we have the limit as x approaches a of c f of x and again c is just a constant so we have a constant times a function and then the property says that we can pull the constant out in front of the limit and do the limit of 
as x approaches a of f of x times that c value. So again, we're going to rewrite this limit that I have here. I have the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x squared. So I'm going to rewrite that as 3 times the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared, which is equal to 3 times 2 squared, which is equal to 3 times 4, so our limit is 12. The next property is our sum and difference rule. And it reads, the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus or minus g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus or minus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. As x approaches 3 of x squared, so I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x. And then we direct substitute, so we get 3 squared minus 2 times 3. So we end up with 9 minus 6 which is equal to 3. We're going to continue with a couple more properties. We have the limit as x approaches a of f of x g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And in this case, we just take the limit of each piece and then multiply them together. And again, the example is the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 plus x times x squared plus 7. So we're going to separate the two and write two individual limits and multiply them by each other. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 plus x times the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 7. And when we direct substitute, we end up with 1 plus 1 times 1 squared plus 7. So we end up with 2 times 8, which is equal to 16. And the last property we have to look at is the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit divided by, sorry, divided by the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And our example is the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 3x divided by 5x. And again, we're going to write this as two limits and divide them. So the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 3x divided by the limit as x approaches 1 of 5x. And then our direct substitution, we end up with 1 squared plus 3 times 1 divided by 5 times 1. And 1 squared is equal to 1, so we have 1 plus 3 is 4 divided by 5. Now as we learn more rules, we're going to need to be able to use these properties um, without actually rewriting them all the time. So we're going to take a look at a couple of example problems. And we're going to do them just as we did before, but we're not going to take the time to rewrite all of them. So this first one, we have the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 3x plus 2. And here we're going to use direct substitution and our sum and difference rule. 
So the limit as x goes to 4 of x squared is 4 squared minus the limit as x goes to 4 of 3x is 3 times 4 plus the limit as x goes to 4 of 2 is the limit of a constant. It's just the constant. So we end up with 16 minus 12 is 4 plus 2 is 6. The next one, we have the limit as x approaches 1 of the square root of x squared plus 8 divided by x plus 2. And we're going to direct substitute into the numerator and direct substitute into the denominator. So we get the square root of 1 squared plus 8 divided by 1 plus 2 which is equal to the square root of 9, 1 plus 8, divided by 3. The square root of 9 is equal to 3, so we have 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1. And the last one, we have the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus x minus 5 times 3x plus 2. So we're going to use the sum and difference rule and the product rule here. So we're going to have the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus x minus 5 is 2 squared plus 2 minus 5 times 3 times 2 plus 2, which is equal to 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1, and then we have 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, and 1 times 8 is equal to 8. And that's it for this video.